It has been reported in the media that a complete restructuring or even a breakup of the Fresenius Group are being considered. Are there such plans? And what would be the purpose? One thing's clear. We want our company to remain strong and efficient for the long term. And um, that is why we invest where we can add value. And that is why we save where it makes sense and even more so where it is necessary. Our existing group structure has served us very well over the years. It provides many advantages. But the world is dynamic and changing. New trends are arising that we need to deal with. And that poses some challenges for us. It also provides opportunities. We need to respond to both the challenges and the opportunities in the best possible way. I want all our businesses to reach their full potential. And therefore, there must not be any limits on thinking. There are no limits on thinking. In principle, whatever is the best for our group and our businesses is also conceivable. Does that mean that we need to make significant changes to our structure? No, at least not necessarily. And uh, we are certainly not at a point where decisions can be made. If we find that the current structure continues to bring us more advantages and disadvantages, we will most obviously not change it. We received government support and then paid out a record dividend to our shareholders. How do these two facts go together? I see no contradiction. Firstly, only a quarter of our profit is paid to shareholders, 25%. The balance is kept to further strengthen Fresenius. Secondly, also excluding government support. We've been clearly profitable. Thirdly, in our German hospital business, and that is where the lion's share of government support was received, we were asked to keep beds free for COVID patients. Although, fortunately, they did not arrive in the numbers initially feared. Reserving capacity is a valuable service for which we rightly received compensation. Fourthly, despite receiving public support, Many of our competitors reported losses, which have been offset by even further public grants. We, however, have been profitable. Why? Because we're more efficient, because in the past we invested more. So after paying taxes, isn't it fair to pay a dividend to those who provided us with the capital to invest? Bottom line, paying a dividend while receiving government support is by no means unethical. Do me a favor, please. Whenever you are approached on this, don't be defensive about it. You have every reason to be proud to be Fresenius. There is a lot of public discussion right now about diversity and inclusiveness. What do you think diversity brings to our company? Fresenius is diversity. We have more than 300,000 colleagues in more than 100 countries around the world. And tolerance and inclusion are non-negotiable values. We live them every day here at Fresenius, and I'm convinced that diversity is precisely what makes us strong. 
And that's why I would like to ask all of you, be happy about things you have in common with your colleagues, but at the same time, accept and appreciate differences, no matter what cultural background a person comes from, what gender they are, what sexual orientation they have, or perhaps how old they may be. Tolerance, however, applies in all directions. Minorities deserve participation, respect, and the protection of their community. Conversely, these minorities must also accept the interests of the majority. Otherwise, this leads to exactly the opposite of what is intended. I believe that here at Fresenius we try to find a good and fair balance that reflects the interests of all our stakeholders and the broader society. In this sense, let's continue as a company to further improve both diversity and inclusiveness. You've said that we will be focusing more on sustainability. Where are we on that right now? Sustainability is essential. It is not only about short-term success. It is about how decisions and actions affect our society, affect our planet over the long term. Now, Fresenius is clearly not one of the major carbon emitters, but um, yes, for example, in production, in uh, hospital operations, in our supply chains, we obviously do have an impact on the environment. And we should strive to keep that as low as possible. And therefore, we need to set ourselves sustainability targets. By the way, these targets will be included in the compensation scheme for the management board. In the next step, together with our experts, we are developing clear goals and more importantly, ways to achieve them. Let me give you just one example. Our climate protection target, it will be based on the long-term political goals of the European Union, but also on the very high expectations of our investors. I cannot say today what other specific measures will result from this over time, but one thing is clear. Fresenius will become more sustainable. More than ever before, we will live up to our responsibility as a good corporate citizen. Considering all the challenges that we are facing, Will Fresenius continue to be a good place to work? As the saying goes, you grow with your tasks. Accepting challenges, overcoming them together and enjoying success. What could make a job more attractive than that? Of course, the developments we initiate will not always, not everywhere, and not only bring benefits to everyone. Nevertheless, it is important that we tackle the challenges actively, confidently, and transparently from a position of strength and together as a team. The demand for what we do continues to grow. And in my mind, very clearly, Fresenius has a promising future ahead. Anyone who wants to help shape this future will find excellent opportunities here. And as an employer, we will do everything in our power to inspire people like that to stay with Fresenius or to come work for us. <laughs> to be as inspired and enthusiastic uh, as I still am even after more than 16 years with this great company.